Okay, so we are on chapter four, we are on page four, and we are looking at the consolidated statement of earnings. So, this is a comprehensive earnings statement, so it includes OCI. And it's multi-step, so it's categorized. Okay, so this is a template for you. Kind of shows exactly what it should look like. So we'll just briefly go through it. Here's our sales, minus cost of goods sold, gross profit. We've got our operating expenses broken down into selling and admin. So we have earnings from operations. Then we have the other. Now notice interest revenue is included here. That's because they consider this a financing activity separate from the main business activities. So interest revenue and interest expense is always going to be there. Then there's a gain on the sale of investments and trading securities and subtotal that. So we have other revenues and gains, other expenses and losses. Sometimes you will see these combined, okay? Like for example, if you only had an interest revenue and an expense, you might just list them in one. But in this example, to be thorough, you'd list them in two. Impairment of goodwill. Goodwill is what we'll write down or record when we buy more than 50% of another company, and you learn that all in advanced. And then there's a loss due to flood damage, which is incidental, so it's included. Here's our earnings from continuing operations before income taxes, so that's where we started on the last page. Then we've got our income taxes and earnings from continuing operations. Then we have our discontinued, and notice these are both losses, so there's recoveries to get these numbers, then there's net income or net earnings. Here's our OCI section. Unrealized law and investments, net of so much tax. So again, because it's separated from income taxes up here, we have to make it net of tax. And here is our comprehensive earnings. So, we'll talk about earnings per share at the bottom in a second. All these accounts, all the way down to net income. These accounts, not subtotals, get closed to retained earnings. Whereas the that are in OCI get closed to AOCI. So under earnings per share then, we have from continuing ops, then discontinued ops, then net income. So by pulling discontinued ops out, it gives investors a number that is more likely to be sustained because this will all go away once we've sold off and got rid of the segment or the geographic location or whatever it is. So this is the number that's going to prove to be more sustainable. That's why we separate it out. Um, notice down here it tells us about the tax, it tells us about the shares and didn't uh, for preferred and that's to calculate EPS, which we're going to do on it in a little while. And if you look in illustration 411, operation expenses can be broken down into more detail. So cut out, because let's say you're doing a Wiley Plus question. So you're looking for selling expenses, and it doesn't have selling expenses as a single thing. Well, then maybe you're looking at breaking it down into more detail. 
in which case you list your selling expenses, list, 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 and then total them up. Okay? So you'd have to pull them in and out. So watch for that, you guys. You have to be flexible now because we've moved away from intro. Now you have to start looking at different ways things are presented. Don't turn the page over yet. I'll, I'll put it down here just to show it to you. What if the impairment of goodwill was not tax deductible? How much would income tax expense be? So take a second. We're saying this, where is it? Impairment of goodwill was not tax deductible. How do I calculate income taxes then? Take Put it on pause, you guys. Try doing this question so that you've thought about it and able to um, get something straight in your head. And I'll just keep going. You can put it back on when you're ready to see if your answer is right. So, We know tax expense is 25% times all the taxable income, which used to be 2,103,500. Two, so if you took 25% of that, you should get 525,875. Okay? So this is 25%. But our taxable income has now changed. So now it's 25% times we know the 2103500 plays in but do you, and we need to take this out or add this in or do something we've got to get rid of the impairment of goodwill well we subtracted it because impairments like a loss to get this number so do we add it back or subtract it again we have to add it back And so that's go to 558375. So hopefully that makes sense to you, what you're doing. And so I'm pointing up here. You're taking this 2103 that we used earlier. But I've got to get this out of here for my tax calculation because it doesn't have anything to do with tax. So I took it off to get here. So I have to add it back to figure out my taxable income and then multiply it by the tax rate. So these are the kinds of things you guys put in intermediate because we're trying to get you to think bigger than just, oh, this is how you do an income statement because in practice you could get this from someone and this could be tax, um, tax uh, recoverable and they will have done this wrong. So you'll have to know, oh yeah, that's what they did, calculate it, fix it, and make it right. Okay, so even you guys that don't go to the CPA but that are working in accounting have to be able to um, think of the concepts of it, not just memorize it straightforward, because often you're going to be looking at someone else's work, okay, especially as you move up in your career. Okay. So that was the multi-step income statement. And as you know from intro, there's like a billion types. The next one I want to look at is on page five, and it's the single step. And you just split it into the continuing ops to revenues and expenses. And of course, in with revenues would be gains, in with expenses would be losses. So we've got our revenues, sales revenue, rent revenue. We've got our expenses all listed there, particular order. Then we get continuing earnings or um, income before tax. And notice the wording's a little different, right? Well, continuing earnings before earnings tax Shouldn't that say continuing 
income before income tax? Well, it doesn't matter. It means the same thing. So you kind of get flexible. So that's where everything else kind of stops. This is the different part. And then this is kind of the same. The income tax, earnings from different continuing ops, discontinued operations, and then the EPS. And again, this EPS calculation. Okay, so I want to talk about the condensed statement. So we had multi-step, single-step, and condensed. Um, it shows gross profit, income from operations, income before tax, and net income. And you can see it in illustration 413 in your text. Now, just before I finish off this little recording, nature versus function. You either show your expenses based on either nature or function. So, if it was nature, that would be all depreciation together, all salaries together, all rent, all um, benefits expenses, all that would all be lumped together. It wouldn't be selling and admin because that's by the expenses nature. What's it all about? It's about salaries. It's about depreciation. Now for function, we allocate based on the function organization. selling and admin. So this would be more like the multi-step and this more like the single step. ASPE, it doesn't really matter. IFRS wants you to pick one that's information that is most reliable and relevant. And those are the two types. Okay. So I want to finish this recording, and then we're going to do this example on preparing the multi steps so that you actually have some practice doing. With.